Hello, everybody. Welcome to migration uh, module number three for the Posi Supercomputer Systonics. My name is Pascal, and I'll be taking to you, talking to you about using modules and containers on the new supercomputer. So the learning outcomes for this training session is to summarize changes to the existing practices to using modules and containers on Systonics, which differs slightly uh, from pre-Systonic systems. Determine whether and how API libraries and drivers changes impact your project and discuss updates uh, to loading modules when using Cytonics for JavaScripts and so on. We also will discuss identifying software installations uh, when software installations are necessary, and that will, uh, will be covered in module number four, and understanding the changes in the programming environment uh, so that you're familiar and uh, prepared for it. And to summarize changes to your containers when using uh, Cytonics. Now, types of software on Cytonics. So the Stonic software stack includes uh, some vendor supplied uh, software, right? So there's an operating system, a set of compilers, some high performance libraries and some research domain uh, specific packages. Uh, but there's also uh, POSI provided uh, software as well. So there, there are certain sources of software such as HP Cray, which is the pro uh, uh, hardware provider. And they provide optimized compilers, libraries and tools. POSI supports a core of optimized scientific applications and libraries uh, commonly used by uh, our, our research groups. And then uh, research groups themselves, project groups, are responsible for installing and maintaining any domain-specific software required for their computational workflows that is not covered by uh, some of the uh, more commonly used ones that are provided by POSI. If we look at the flowchart uh, on the uh, right-hand side, you can see that the, the system modules, there's programming environments, they're sort of the basis point which provides compilers, but then from that you can get debuggers, profilers, optimized libraries, and then uh, sitting separate from that are Singularity HPC containers, which are containers of software and some scientific software modules. So location of software. Uh, the software is actually located on Slash software. So we have a file system called Slash software and there's system-wide software. It's accessible by all users and it's accessed through the module system that's maintained by POSI. And it is through uh, software slash Cytonix, which is kind of an easy name, uh, place to remember. This is where we put uh, the optimized software for uh, the Sonix hardware. Project-wide software that uh, the research group may choose to install it would be maintained by uh, project members, and it would be accessible in uh, slash software slash projects slash your project ID. So if your project ID was, let's say, uh, POSI1 for some, uh, uh, and maybe it's uh, some of uh, us might have like S32, that would be the ID. And the user maintained one uh, is in slash software slash projects slash the project ID that the user belongs to and then username. And this is where we would say put in uh, download containers, any small installs that you're doing that should be located there. So the key changes uh, of this software from pre Cytonix systems to Cytonix is a move away from Intel architecture to AMD architecture and the move from uh, Intel compilers to AMD compilers and Clang based compilers. POSI is providing software modules, uh, but they'll be initially primarily built with the, uh, the GNU compiler, so GCC, G++, G Fortran. Uh, we are also moving away from the MOLLE installation tool to the SPAC installation tool, which we'll discuss, uh, we'll discuss in later modules. Uh, some system-wide installations, specifically for bioinformatics and also open foam, are now performed as container modules, rather than uh, either user-maintained software or uh, through just actual raw modules. The, there's also a move from environment modules to LMOD modules. Uh, for those of you who are uh, researchers that have used other policy systems besides, let's say, Magnus, uh, such as Topaz, uh, they may be uh, somewhat familiar with the dislike differences in LMOD versus environment modules. Um, versions uh, will be, should be specified for all modules that you try to load. So the available software on Cytonix, there's quite a, a large gambit. This is just uh, a quick overview of some of the main things. In terms of languages and parallel models, well, so we still uh, have compilers for C, C++, and Fortran. There's also Python, R, Perl, Ruby, Java, and Rust. Distributed memory uh, programs will use MPI. There's also OpenMP, pthreads for shared memory. Uh, the programming environments, uh, Cray now has moved to a Clang-based uh, C and C++ compiler, but will also still provide their uh, specific, uh, if you will, bespoke Cray Fortran compiler. There's the GNU programming environment and AOCC. And AOCC is an AMD optimized uh, set of compilers. We have a bunch of optimized libraries, specifically math libraries like BLAS, LAPAC, and Scalapac, FF, FAST Fourier transforms, FFTW, 
as well as some IO libraries like NetCDF, EDOS, and HDF5. The development toolkit uh, will include some of the tools that they're familiar with. Uh, there's some newer ones that are create perf tools, but uh, ARM packages, the ARM Forge that, 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 that does uh, debugging like DDT will be provided uh, as well. In terms of supported software, the list is far more extensive than this. We do provide libraries for Boost, uh, Trilinos, Plumed. Uh, the tools are Singularity and Nextflow. There's a few visualization tools. We also provide an HPC, so high performance computing Python. Uh, and domain specific software would be stuff like Gromax, uh, NAMD, LAMPS, uh, FAST, and systems that are heavily used by a wide variety of research groups. Uh, so is the software uh, you need available? Uh, so if it is available, you can explore this by looking at what modules are available, then this is the uh, essentially the main migration uh, training that you should make sure you pay attention to, you pay attention to all of them. Um, uh, the other one is if it's not available, then we do have a follow-up session for going to essentially developing and building your own tools. Uh, so that's step two. Uh, if it's not available, is it a container available? So some uh, software we do not provide directly through modules, but there may be containers of that software. And we do provide a singularity to essentially make use of these containers and, and, or container images and, and launch containers. Um, and that's also discussed here in some detail. So modules on Cytonix. So the Cytonix module system is using LMOD. Uh, the Magnus and Galaxy used environment modules, but a, a number of other uh, systems use LMOD. Uh, LMOD uses hierarchies, right? So the hierarchies allow modules to be having similar names, but in different parts of the hierarchy. And so modules may be hidden from you. They're dependent on the loaded compilers. Um, LMOD will automatically uh, reload dependent modules uh, when you're swapping modules. Uh, and the key thing that might be a change for some people is that there's no, uh, you cannot not specify a version. So before on Magnus, you could do module load a package name, and that would be enough. That is not the case on Cytonix. You must provide a version. Of course, if you don't provide a version, the module system will try to suggest what versions you might have wanted to load or what module you might have load, wanted to load. Some commands are different. So module avail can use wildcards. They could not in the on Magnus and, and Galaxy using environment modules. So you can provide substrings. A module spider can list modules that can be loaded in the system across compiler hierarchies. So some module avail is limited to the things you can actually load as it stands with the modules that you have available and already loaded. And module spider can see modules that exist but cannot be loaded because there are some other module dependencies or they exist in different parts of the hierarchy. Uh, and the command uh, output format will differ a little bit uh, from show what, what is in help from before the pre to Cytonix, but they're, they're sort of minor for formatting changes. All right. So to get a sense of what the hierarchy means, an LMOD hierarchy, the, the, usually the idea is that different sets of modules are available depending on the path you take. So the top level hierarchy is, it happens to be compilers. So each compiler will have modules associated with that particular compiler. You would load that compiler first, and then you would load the subsequent modules. And you might have a different set of modules depending on which compiler you load. An example here is that in the GCC path or the GNU path, right? If you loaded that set of uh, programming environments, you might see Cray, LibSci, Cray FT, Gromax. If Gromax had not been built with the, uh, the let's say the Cray compiler, then if you went into the Cray set of the hierarchy, the Cray tree, you would not see that module. Uh, using the hierarchy is a, is a bit uh, tricky for, uh, in the sense that, um, as I said, there'll be modules that may be present in one part of, in one hierarchy, but not present in the other one. So choosing one of the available modules at the top level of the hierarchy will allow you, like the programming variants, will allow you to sort of unfold that, uh, that set of modules. And you can uh, look at the modules that exist on the system with module avail. Right? And I'll start listing uh, the, the set. You can then load these modules. New modules may provide access to deeper levels of the hierarchy. So if you have uh, in uh, the diagram, at the top level, you have nothing loaded and you start loading module. You could choose either module 1A, 1B, or 1C. If you load 1A, you might see suddenly that there's uh, currently previously available, you would still see the modules that exist at the top level of the hierarchy, but new modules would suddenly become available if you did module avail, such as 2A, 2B, 2C. Then you could load 2B, and that might also provide access to new sets of modules in the hierarchy, such as 3A, 3B, and 3C. So an example uh, uh, fleshed out here is HDF5. So HDF5 is an IO module. Uh, it's available through Cray-provided ones as well as uh, Posi-provided ones. 
And if you asked module avail, and I've already loaded a programming environment, I happen to be in the GNU programming environment in this case, when I'm looking at these commands. So if you did module avail HDF5, you would notice Cray HDF5 parallel, Cray HDF, ADOS, a bunch of other HDF5 uh, libraries. If you then wanted to see, this is specific to that particular part of the hierarchy. If you want to see if there are modules in other hierarchies somewhere else, then you would look at HDF5 star, let's say, but you do spider. So spider walks all branches of the hierarchy and searches for modules uh, that contain the substring and will then also provide you information on what needs to be loaded to get a, gain access to that module. So the example here is I have Cray HDF5 and Cray HDF5 says you will need to load all modules and it's all modules on a given line for any of the, uh, on any one of these lines before you can actually access Cray HDF5. And here you could load in AOCC 3.2.0 that happens to be the uh, AMD programming environment or GCC 10.3 or so on. Uh, and in this case, it's, uh, it would be all the modules specifically on that line. So if you want to load parallel, there's an extra dependency. You have to load not just the AOCC, but a Cray Ampage or CC and Cray Ampage, as well as Cray P network none and Cray Ampage or Cray MP network. It'll list them. And so this way you can see if you, if you did not see a module present, you could then search the hierarchy to see if a module is present and what dependencies are required what, what modules you essentially have to load to load that module to make it available to you. Now, swapping branches in the hierarchy um, is, is a bit subtle in the sense that right, you, you could be going down one branch and it, uh, uh, one part of the hierarchy and then choose to go to, at the top level, change the compiler. And that will change the modules that are available and modules that are, are loaded as well, uh, if that's possible, if they exist in both parts of the hierarchy. So the example here is that there you're start off with nothing loaded and then you load module 1A. So at that point, you now have a loaded module, you have previous modules available that you could swap to, and now you have available 2A, 2B, 2C, but you couldn't see 2D. So I'm in this example, 2D is not available. You wouldn't see it in module avail. You could see it maybe in module spider. If you swap from 1A to 1B, so you're swapping the top level of the hierarchy, you will see that previous, there are still modules that you could list that are previously available and new ones that are now available. So 2A, 2B, and 2D, but 2C is no longer present in that list of module available. And so the, the, this is just to make sure that you, you make use of a module spider if there are modules that you know were present or you thought were present and you don't see, have a look to see if, with module spider and module available. Combine the two for searches for modules. Right, so you get main su subtle differences. Uh, here's an example of swapping. So I have, I uh, logged into Satonix, I did module list, I happen to be put, placed into the GNU programming environment by default. So that is the default programming environment loaded on Satonix. And then I could load the Cray HDF5, I could list what modules I have, I could see suddenly the addition of Cray HDF5, I could swap GNU to Cray and it will start switching module paths and it'll tell you due to a module path names the following have been reloaded, Cray HDF5 and Cray Ampage, because they had dependencies on the GNU or on the compiler hierarchy. So they switched around. Um, I could try then loading something like uh, module load Cray NetCDF HDF5 parallel, and it will say LMOD has the following errors. The modules or extensions exist. So it tells you it's present, but you cannot load as requested. And that's where, the, where maybe you would say, is it, in, is it in the right hierarchy? Maybe it's not available in the hierarchy, uh, or there are dependencies. In this case, that happens to indicate that there are dependencies that have not been fulfilled for this module to become available. The Satonix POSI uh, module, uh, so the modules provided by POSI are actually just set up at a simple uh, uh, one level hierarchy of just the compilers. So the POSI supported modules implemented hierarchy is just a programming environment level. Uh, non POSI uh, modules like Cray modules can have a deeper, more complex hierarchy. And the example is, if, as I mentioned, as I showed before, the HCF5 one. For POSI, it's, it's, it's limited to just uh, the compilers, as you can see here. So module avail Python, in this case, 3.10.0, it is available. You can then ask, well, where, what are the available sets across the entire set of hierarchies? And you can see that there's a Python 3.10.0 in AOCC, CC, and GCC. So they're available in all these three different hierarchies. There's no other dependencies as well. Um, so we keep it, we try to keep it with this uh, pretty flat um, in terms of hierarchies. Uh, so runtime reproducibility with modules. Now this is a one I will try to go through a, a little slower because it is a, a subtle change um, from pre-Satonics to Satonics. 
So since programs dynamically load dependencies at runtime, so if you have a program that has some dependency like a library, it will typically load it at runtime. So it gets launched and it will look for that library in library paths. And if that library is provided, it will then start running. If the library is not present, it will complain that the library, some symbols are not found and the library is not present. The search uh, for dependencies differs between pre-Satonic Satonic systems. And in pre-Satonics, the executable at runtime searches for library A. The first instance in the library paths that is found will be used. So if you had, let's say I had a library that I want to use called libA, but it was provided through three different modules or three different possible paths. The first one in my particular set of paths would be loaded. On Satonics, the runtime environment is always to a very specific path. So it's always pointing to a very specific version of libA, which is defined at build time. So when, at build time, all the software is set up to have a preference for the library, for the paths that are chosen for a library. And the outcome is a more reproducible runtime. And I, it, it may have caused some issues with uh, users on Magnus uh, who did not necessarily know about this. Uh, so the subtlety ends up in how you load modules. So Magnus uses environment modules, which does not have a hierarchy. All the modules work together. The um, uh, modules files have explicit conflicts with each other. But the modules that provide the same functionality, if they don't listen to explicit conflict uh, and provide the same library at the same time, right? You could load the two modules. So if, if I had module, um, foo and the module bar that provided lib a, I could load both. And suddenly I would have two possible lib a uh, essentially builds. Um, and the result is you can get different function, you can get different runtime functionality. So the example here fleshed out in the table is I have module load a, so I'm asking for software a. A happens to depend on functionality that is provided by either library B or C. And by default, uh, module a loads module Right, so the, you get essentially at the runtime, you have A depending on B and you get A plus B. Another scenario you could do is you could load module B explicitly and then load module A and that will still give you A plus B because module A essentially is loading module B, it's already loaded, not much changes in that case. The subtlety ends up being if you load module A, so module A says, well, I need module B, I'll load module B and then you load module C. Module C is now, has higher precedence in providing lib A than module B does. And at runtime, you suddenly get A plus C rather than A plus B, right? The C overwrites B in this case. So if I do the same thing again, where I do module load A, module load C, module load B, implicitly I'm loading, reloading module B again, and it will be now given higher precedence. It will be essentially first in the, the, the library paths that are searched, and suddenly you get A plus B again. So you can see that the Ordering of modules can impact runtime behavior. This is that happens to be on Satonics because on, on pre-Satonic system, sorry. But on Satonics, we've done, uh, we've essentially removed this um, uh, irreproducibility or this, this, uh, this possibility of having uh, variations in runtime behavior by specifying the path that libraries are searched for explicitly with uh, our paths. Um, and so the, the conflict is, actually, the, is resolved at build time. So the L module hierarchy combined with the use of SPAC, which is our, our package manager, the build means that the previous error cannot happen. Conflicts are handled with modules residing with different hierarchies and executables directly refer to the libraries that they're compiled with. So modules on Synonix have pre-dependent dependencies that cannot be changed at runtime without some heavy engineering. And so if you load, if software A was built with B, it will always be using B regardless of any other modules you load, whether C or before, afterwards, it, it, it doesn't really matter. You module load anything, Module load A, you always get A plus B. Module load anything, you'll still end up with A plus B. So that is uh, a nice change in terms of uh, reproducibility. So the key changes, right? Modules and sonics have predetermined dependencies that cannot be changed at runtime. This reduces flexibility somewhat. So you can't, you can't build a software and uh, test the impact of two different libraries by just doing module loads. You would have to build two different versions of that library, or we would have to build two different versions of the library that point to the different libraries. But it's more reducible, less error prone, and it's more transparent. So that's why we have kind of like this approach. Uh, you can view the predetermined dependencies with module show, right? So with module show, it will tell you what it's going to load. It will, should list all the dependencies that, they are, uh, that the software needs. Programming modules on Satonix. So a quick summary. So the programming environment uh, should be loaded as a dependency for the modules. So you have to start off with one of them. 
the GNU environment is loaded by default. The availability of modules now depends on the loaded environment modules. You can explore that with uh, module spider. Uh, and for more information on, on, on SPAC and, and so on, that has an impact here, uh, please see module four, which has discussions of changes to the compiler and a complete list of the programming languages and interpreters available. And I should note that Python 2 is not supported on Sotonix, right? We will not be providing Python 2 support because it's uh, essentially past the end of life. Uh, supported software, uh, the, the key changes, right? So we've got, this is not exhaustive as this, but it's just kind of a list of the things we are trying to provide, which is some HPC character applications like Nectar, CP2K, Warf ROMs. There's a uh, library such as ADOs, HPX, Cocos. Uh, we've got programming languages like Rust, which is new. Um, Python libraries will be Dask, uh, H5, NetCDF, Numba. Um, Astronomy has WSC, uh, WCS tools and WS Clean. And for bioinformatics, uh, through usually con uh, containers, but, but also through modules, we've got BBS tools, uh, Diamond, XML. For a complete list, uh, please refer to the documentation. Um, the, one of the key changes that uh, has uh, from pre-Satonics, Satonics, and some things that are not provided, the modules that are no longer provided, is Moose and Siesta and Python 2, which is probably the biggest change for most people. It's past its end of life. So we are no longer providing Python 2 support. Of course, if you'd like to have your own personal Python 2 uh, through some stuff like Honda, um, you can first of all see module four, which discusses some of this stuff, um, but there's also documentation about that as well. Um, so for further references for modules, again, please see check the supported software via the, the particular link there. And there's also more details on the documentation for modules specifically. So the next uh, point of discussion is containers on Cytonix. Um, containers, uh, package applications, and all its dependencies into a simple, a simple, a single, simple sandbox piece of software. So essentially, it looks like one nice uh, bit of software. All the dependencies are typically internal, but you can do stuff to change it. The pre-installed software and dependencies reduce run installation time since they're available. You, you might have stuff which has very, very long build times. One way is to build it once, make a container. And that simplifies your life because the container should be transportable elsewhere. Uh, there are advantages in certain circumstances. So if you have large volume of software to be installed, like bioinformatics, or you have very complex uh, builds with lots of dependencies, um, or dependencies with high change uh, changes of package conflict, of version conflicts, right? If there's high ch chances of, of package conflicts, uh, those are Python and R workflows. Containers are very useful. And also in certain circumstances where you have lots of uh, very intensive IO patterns, that's not ideal for the parallel luster file system that is on Cytonix and on a number of HPC systems. The example is OpenFoam. Containers are very useful uh, in that case. So containers on Cytonix. Uh, like pre cytonix systems, we have provided a singularity module. So singularity is a container runtime on Cytonix. Uh, it's, it's been configured to, uh, to use Cytonix properly. So we uh, do not, please do not install your own version and expect it to work as the one that's provided uh, by um, the policy st staff. We also have a Singularity Astro container that is also specifically to the Astro community that has a couple of other small changes. Um, the modules have been really set, set up to uh, expose some very specific default behaviors such as expose the scratch file system and other relevant file systems to the container and also to ensure the MPI applications container make use of the high-speed interconnect that is outside the container. Right, on the actual Cytonix system. Uh, so containers on Cytonix can be used in two ways, same as pre-Cytonix. You can do explicit singularity commands and have a, an actual uh, container, but there's a, a new transparent module-like experience um, provided by uh, container modules via SHPC, which I will discuss now or in a bit. I should just mention that for singularity commands, right, to, to run singularity, you'd load module load singularity, and then you'd run your standard set of commands like singularity exec, uh, some container image, some commands and some arguments, or if you're running within obviously a, a, a bash script, s run singularity um, to, uh, and then you in that obviously container, you could also load, I mean, container modules, you can module load a uh, tool and version. So this would be for uh, the container modules provided by SPC. They look like modules. So it looks like you're just loading the package itself. So an example would be, I showed some examples with HDF5, module load uh, HDF5 or module load Python. If you had a container image, it would be exactly the same, module load, the package name, the tool, and the version. 
So uh, container modules with SASPC. So the Singularity Register uh, HPC is a tool to automate installation of containers as container modules. Um, the container modules essentially provide the container application and expose it as if it's just a command line argument. So if, if you had a container before called, uh, let's say we'll just we'll just go with A, right? You'd have to do Singularity exec uh, the container image that contains that command, then A and all its command line arguments. The Singularity HTTPC, the key thing is that it would just say, just write A and the command line arguments. It simplifies the interface. So the interface is implemented as uh, by shell functions or shell scripts that is, try to wrap and hide the Singularity uh, container runtime syntax, which can be quite verbose if you're doing lots of stuff. Most bioinformatics uh, packages on Tectonix are installed as container modules. So uh, a quick summary of considerations and policies of uh, policy software. So policy provides support for popular software uh, for, cross, uh, for multiple scientific domains. Uh, we don't provide all software in all domains. It's not possible, of course. We've just tried the best to uh, find commonly used software. Uh, the software is accessible via modules. And uh, if possible, these are optimized for Sonic hardware. Uh, we don't pay for licensed domain software. So if there's a software, there is examples of software that does require a license, like VASP. We don't provide a license for VASP. Users have to provide that license and then can access the and, and run the actual application provided by the VASP module. Uh, does provide, as I said, we do provide some uh, popular HPC applications that have restricted license. Usually it's bring your own. Um, but there are also some debugging tools that are licensed software that we provide, but we have license for. Posi provides documentation for users to how to build and install their uh, software, but that, that's not supported by uh, Posi staff. We'll obviously provide some assistance. Um, is it, but it's discretionary. So if, if a user requires some assistance installing and building software, they would raise a ticket uh, and we would see uh, if it's possible to help. Um, but it's, it's obviously up to the user to try to build and install that software themselves. We would give priority to specific projects like Pacer. So Pacer was the uh, Exascale project uh, to, to kind of help launch Photonics and strategic and uptake projects. Uh, so please refer to the software stack policies if you have any questions. Um, with, with that, it's a good idea to just review the key changes and impacts. Um, so we've gone from pre-Satonic systems, specifically Magnus, to Satonics, from environment modules to LMOD modules. And the, um, the result is uh, a more reversible, better conflict resolution of modules. We've now also switched from the Mali Packets Manager to SPAC, which also improves reproducibility. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, a large, it's got a larger community of, of uh, developers developing this tool. It's very well documented and has a human readable command line interface, CLI. We've gone from uh, the Cray, GNU, and Intel set of compilers, so still Cray, GNU, but now there's no Intel. There's only AOCC, so AMD optimized compilers replaced Intel compilers. The other uh, subtlety is that uh, Clang, uh, the Cray compilers have changed a little bit so that the C and C++ compilers are not based on Clang uh, and software is not compiled with Intel. And there's obviously an updated software list. So Scientex software has changed a little bit. Uh, and one of the nice changes, changes for users of Singularity is that we now provide some of the packages that were all commonly used through using Singularity with explicit Singularity set of commands as these container modules. And so it should improve the user experience. But Singularity is also there for, for those who need a, a very specific container, not provided by the container modules. So how do you get help? Well, so we have uh, migration uh, documentation and guides. Um, you can obviously, uh, we'll have recordings uh, of all the migration the training sessions. And we also have the help desk as always, uh, is feel free to uh, raise a ticket and we all try to do our best to help. Thank you very much for listening.